Well, good evening. This is Scott with ReadySquirrel.com, and I just published an article, If I Boil Seawater, Can I Drink It? You can, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, go over to ReadySquirrel.com if you want to read it, or you can look down below in the comments, and I'll have a link to the article. If I boil seawater, can I drink it? That's kind of tongue-in-cheek, just so that we can talk about some of the methods that you can use to actually make seawater drinkable in a survival situation. <clears throat> Have you ever wondered why people stranded on a desert island or lost at sea can die from dehydration surrounded by all that water? It's because there's way too much salt in seawater. Boiling seawater does not make it safe to drink because it does not remove the salt. On average, seawater holds three... 3.5% salt, too, too much for the body to process. As seawater boils, it evaporates, leaving the salt behind. <clears throat> You're making the water saltier. Keep boiling, and all you'll have left is salt. Five harmful effects of salt. Well, eventually you die, an excruciating death from what I've read, and the kidneys, again, can't process the amount of salt, so it just builds up in your body. You become more dehydrated drinking <clears throat> seawater than you do drinking nothing. Uh, the uh, drinking seawater will cause excess urination and a process called exoosmosis will occur, which means your cells give up their fresh water to try to create a symbiosis or a balance rather in your body. So death by drinking seawater you're out at sea for 30 days and you finally, you know, you've run out of water and you've just got to drink something. This is what it's going to look like. At first, there'll be vomiting, then dizziness, crenulation. <clears throat> the cells in your body will begin to collapse. Your blood thickens. Blood flow to the body parts is reduced. Um, brain chemistry goes haywire, so you go crazy. Your organs begin to fail. You lapse into a coma and you take your last breath. Interesting facts about drinking seawater. Uh, according to the U.S. Geological Survey, freshwater contains less than 1,000 parts per million of salt. Ocean water contains 35,000 parts per million. <clears throat> Making uh, seawater safe to drink for emergency survival. Seawater into drinking water distillation. There's two ways you can distill. You can do it with the sun, and you can do it by boiling and capturing. What does it mean to distill seawater for drinking? The process of distilling seawater is accomplished by boiling it or evaporating it with the heat of the sun. The evaporated water is then turned back into a liquid, liquid and captured in a container. Distillation removes salt and just about everything else, producing pure drinking water. <clears throat> Is distilled ocean water good for long-term survival? There are some minor but controversial issues with distilled water, neither of which I think really pertain to an emergency survival situation. One of those is, again, controversial that purified water actually leaches minerals from your body. <clears throat> but I don't think you're going to be worried about losing a little calcium if you're dying from dehydration. And second, <clears throat> the same kind of process, the water, um, or the distilled water rather, will actually leach chemicals from uh, the container. How do you distill seawater in a survival situation? <clears throat> Excuse me. In an emergency, there are two ways you can distill seawater to remove the salt. Neither of these methods is like super efficient. The solar still are really not efficient. So keep that in mind, but it may be your own only option. So the solar still or solar evaporator. A solar still still it uses the power of the sun to condense water and capture it, creating a purified water source. The solar still captures moisture from the vegetation and seawater in the bottom of the hole. This method takes a long time. If you have enough plastic, make as many of these as you can. Hopefully you have other water sources. You will be lucky to get half to one cup of fresh water from one still in 12 hours. <clears throat> Eight steps to build a solar still. 
dig a hole three feet across and 24 inches deep, dig an additional hole in the center of the first hole large enough to hold a container, place fresh vegetation in the bottom of the hole, pick fresh leaves, the bigger the better, and then dump the seawater directly onto the vegetation. Place your drinking water container in the center of the veg vegetation, place a layer of plastic or sheet over the hole, <clears throat> and then place stone or a little bit of sand in the center of the plastic. So the center or apex of the plastic sheet will drip into your drinking container. Sorry, I've got a scratchy throat, so I gotta drink water. <clears throat> to secure the plastic in place, typo, gotta go fix that. To secure the plastic in place and to prevent loss of moisture, place sand, soil, or rocks along the edge of the plastic. Before removing the plastic, carefully tap the plastic to get water into the cup. According to ARN 12086, Army Survival Manual, you'll need at least three of these stills for each person. A boil still, <clears throat> boiled seawater distillation. You can make a distillation unit or boiling pot to use regularly. See the videos below. Or you can try to make one from found materials when fresh water is not available. Understanding the concept is what's important. <clears throat> I read about a story of a naval pilot that was that crashed on a Pacific island in World War II and actually made a distillation um, unit with parts off of his plane, and I cannot find it. But it can be done. So I have no idea what kind of trash you might find when you're marooned on a South Pacific beach. But a water still uses a fireproof container like a pot with a lid. Attached to the lid is a steel tube or pipe that protrudes through the cover. The still is filled with seawater. The lid and tube or, or pipe is placed on the pan. Place the still over a campfire to boil the seawater. The tube or pipe secured to the top captures evaporated water as it rises and funnels it into a collection container. The water that drips into the collection container is what you can drink. You do not want to drink the initial water that comes out of the cond condensation tube. <clears throat> do not drink until water runs clear. Okay, so there's two YouTube videos down here. This one just shows you this, uh, this gentleman makes... Um, a water distillation unit out of clay. That's it. And this gentleman, this is a really cool video, actually makes a mini distillation unit, but this is a great video to watch if you want to understand the concept of how it's done. I mean, you may want to actually make one of these bottles, but um, this kind of shows you the process. It's a short article today. I appreciate you guys listening. Oh, one, one other thing. If you go over to readysquirrel.com or follow the link down below, I actually have a PDF of the entire U.S. Army Manual ARN 12086. And chapters 3 and 4 discuss different methods of procuring water in a survival situation. It's a good manual, so go over and check it out. If you have any suggestions on what I could do to make these videos better, um, or any questions, uh, let me know. And uh, I want to tell you thanks for hanging out with me for a few. And I will see you next time.